Hello and welcome to the Data Dice YouTube channel. Today we will talk about how to connect a Google Sheet with BigQuery. With that approach, you can make every data in your G Sheets, in BigQuery and your data warehouse available. We will take one example and go through all the necessary steps to establish the connection in just a few minutes. But before you watch this video, please check out the other videos from our free SQL course on this YouTube channel. Or go to our website, link in the description and watch the videos there. But let's start with the Google Sheets connection now. So this is now our Google Sheet, as you see here. So we already called it window function. Why? Because in the next videos, we will talk about window functions where this table gets super important. Due to that, just that you already know. And but at the end, it's just example data. So what do we have here? We have the date. So already the format like BigQuery wants to have it. Um, so the year minus the month minus the day. Then any employees inside the company or whatever. Then a region. So a kind of a category or certain metadata of that person or of that yeah, region in general and and then the sales so at the end just a metric we can then later summing up and so on then important later for the window function video so and basically this table we have now in google sheets maybe a colleague from us or even ourselves is basically maintaining that controlling that adding the data here manually and we would like to have that data as well in BigQuery so that we can maybe combine it with other data, with our all our data in general, with our operative data, whatever. And due to that, we need to establish a connection between the Google Sheet and BigQuery. So how we do that? The important information we need is the link of the sheet. And if we have multiple tabs like we have here, we need also the tab name. These are at the end the two important information we need and for sure the structure of the table that we also need, you will see in a second. So, so that's basically everything we need, but let's start with BigQuery. So we are again in our DWH or Udemy course slash YouTube course <laughs> um, project and we would basically now like to add that data. So I will, so now we can start. So here we have, um, I would put it into G sheets. You can also put it, for example, under a certain data set name with war or something like that. So because it's war data at the end, or you have a single data set just for the cheats, whatever you like. So I, could, I will put it here and here you see already employee sales, but we would like not to do it live again. So we can do here create table. So you just need to click on these three dots here and then create table. And now basically this connection start. And when we basically finish that one, it's already done. Then we have the, yeah, not the table, but the reference to the Google Sheet is already done. You can say it like that, you will see in a second. So at first create table form. We do not want to have an empty table. We have already data inside the sheet. So here we can get data from Google Cloud Storage. We can also once uploading data, we get data from Drive, Big Table, other stuff. But you would like to get it from Drive because at the end Google Sheets is inside the Drive. So now the Drive, um, URL at the end is exactly the one on top here. So we are just copying it and putting it here. And now we need to select the file format. The file format can be a CSV, a JSON, Evro, I think it's called, and a Google Sheet. We would like to have the Google Sheet. And now it's asking here already for the sheet range. This can be even a little bit more complex. So you have the sheet title as you see, but you also have then, you can even say, okay, from which top left cell to which bottom right cell you want to have. So from A1 to D10, whatever. So something like that is possible, as you also see in the example. That we don't need, but for sure we need to add the sheet range. And just that I do not make a typo here, uh, what I'm usually doing is I'm going to rename, copy it, and that's it. And then I can also put it here. So sheet range, employee sets, that's it. More we don't need. So then the destination, so project is already set, data set as well, because we clicked on the data set on the three dots due to that the data set is already pre-selected. If you want to change it, you can still do it here. And then the table. And this I would call now employee, can do the same kind of name as we have already, sales, live. Important would be for me that we put the sheet or G sheet behind so that we know, okay, it's coming data from a sheet and it's even just a connection, which you will see in a second. Table type, external table is correct, not important now. Now we have two different possibilities. Maybe let's do even both. We have the auto detect and we have the edit as text. We do for now the auto detect, which means the BigQuery checks the Google sheet and uh, basically auto detect the schema in terms of the column name, but also in terms of the, the, the data types of the columns. So let's see how it works. So then we have text, we don't need text. 
and then we have the advanced options. So here you can just basically mark all these ones. It's for jack rows and unknown values and so on. So when you have multiple cells in one cell and also or combined multiple cells together merged, I think it's called whatever, how it should be handled that. You usually just need to select all of them, then it's fine. Header rows to skip is more important. So basically the question is when on which line the real data started. In our case, it starts with the second one because date, employee region and sales is not a valid data entry. It's just the, the name of the column at the end. And to do that, this one we don't need in our final data, in our query data. So to do that, we say color rows to skip one. And then we can basically create a table. Let's see what it says. Okay, so far it's done. So now you see here, employee sales live sheet. So this we can now open and here you see date, employee, region and sales. And it already did the date as a date, the employee as a string, the region as a string and the sales as an integer. Now that's already quite good. Then we have the details as usual, but you see one big difference. When we look for example in our already known order item data, you see that we have here a preview. So we can check the data at all. We even see here the rows and so on. This we don't see in that table, but what we have here is the source um, URI. We have the skip leading rows, so all that stuff we basically marked and so on. We even do not see the number of rows here. Yes. And we do not have a preview. Why? Because that table, so the sheet one, is not a physical existing table in BigQuery. It's just a reference to the Google Sheet. At the end, when you are querying it and combining it with other data, it's, work, it's working exactly like a normal table. But as I said, so it's always just basically referencing the original source, which is the Google Sheet. If you're making inside the Google Sheet a change, we can even do it in some seconds, you see immediately that also when you're making basically running the query again, that also in the big query, not the table, more reference, is changing as well. So yes, and due to that, we do not have a preview because at the end it would be a query. Um, and due to that, it's not there. But what we for sure can do is query, so new tab, and then we can select here, select star from, limit, whatever. We can also keep, not important. So let's see, so it's running, running, running. You also see, so zero costs at the end. It's always like when you are getting data from a sheet. Yes, and you have it here. So you have the date, you have the employee, you have the region, and you have the sales. And now what you can do is, for example, maybe let's order it by the employee order by employee and then the date. Uh, ah, yeah. okay, I need to delete the limit. Now we need to limit uh, to deleting it. So limit need always need to be at the end. So even after order by and all that stuff, then comes the limit. So now we have three times pop here, for example, on these dates with the certain sales. Now we can say, okay, now there was a mistake. Bob not did 300 sales on that day. He did 450. So let's go here and then let's search exactly that one. So it's the eight four nine bob 300 so it's that one and now let's change it to 400 and when i now go in here so now it's not changed for sure because basically now it's just referencing the old status but when i do now that one so i'm just running it again you see now okay on the 9th of august 2023 the sales for bob are now four and that's it basically now you have a working reference between bigquery and the google sheet that's it but now I would like to show you also the other way by right? not selecting inside this configuration setup, not the auto detect, but using that you are yeah, defining yourself all the structure. Why we are always doing that. So we are never do auto detect. We're always doing basically the putting the names on ourselves. Because so first, usually to have a so nice yeah, formed data point or G sheet is not really something you have in your real life. So usually you have then also here maybe sometimes a float inside or even a string or an NA not known or something like that. And then for example, it's not taking it nevertheless uh, or not anymore as an integer. It needs to be as a string and so on. So there, for example, a problem. So we are always importing all the data as strings because then the time, if a person makes a mistake and writing somewhere not an integer inside a valid one, you're getting inside the table in BigQuery when we are basically now exe would executing that, we are getting an error, which we do not want to have. So due to that, we are basically importing all the data via defining our own schema with that we also can say, okay, how should be the column names and say every data type is a string. That's it, because then it's easier and all the magic and all the yeah, cleaning the data we can then do in the models. So let's do it again. So I click on G-Sheets and create table, drive, Google Sheet, employee sales, 
this I call now employee sales schema sheet. External tab is fine. So, and now, so you can do it even with field names or you can also add it as text. We can then afterwards check how it looks when we basically did it and uh, when we manually typed it here. Then we can also see how the text would work. If you have a super long file or with a lot of columns, somewhere it makes sense to make it as a text with maybe text formatting and so on in another tool. Makes total sense. For four columns, we can do it like that. So we have date, employee, uh, region, and sales. Yes. So all these type changes and so on, we will do afterwards in the model with a cast. That's it. And maybe cleaning up if needed with a safe cast even. Yeah. Then we have no troubles with any errors because a person mistyped something. If you're not sure what casts are, just check, uh, check out our YouTube channel. There we made already a video about the cast and the safe cast. So we do here basically exactly the same thing. So everything marking and typing a one for header rows to skip because the first row is nothing we are interested in. And that's it. So, and uh, we wanted to quickly check. So edit as text. So it's at the end just the column name, colon, and then the data type, in our case string. Always a comma afterwards except of the last column. That's it. So now we can create it. So employees live schema sheet. And it's working exactly like that. Yes, so that's it. We can quickly try what happens now when we're not writing here 405, when we are writing here unknown, a typical case. <laughs> um, so, and now we can check what's here happening. So here it says everything easy. We should have then somewhere, uh, wait, why is it not changed? Unknown. Ah, I changed it in the wrong, okay, but whatever. So Jane, we can also search for Jane, where we are, there. Ah, no, there it is, yes. So there we have it. And then we can switch to live sheet. It also says it's fine. Let's see what it does. Yes, and here you see error while reading table, then just the name of the, uh, or the path to the sheet inside BigQuery. Could not convert value to integer, row one, column three. Ah, a little bit hard, but, um, and then yeah, just any weird ID. Yes, so here you see, okay, there's something wrong because our, yeah, how do you say our auto detect schema said it's always be an integer and if it's not, it's breaking the whole model. If you now have a SQL model with thousand lines of codes, everything is working, but you have this one sheet inside where you just want to do a small mapping or whatever, you have a problem because any person somewhere did wrong false entry inside or wrong not correctly formatted value, your whole model is breaking and your data is not updating anymore. And that's a huge issue. And due to that, we are always doing not the auto detect, we are detect, we are making it ourselves by basically with the two advantages, not breaking it because we always say just importing it as a string, we can handle it afterwards in the models and we can define the names of the columns as we like, we want to have it in the database. So connecting Google Sheets with BigQuery is a common approach in your data infrastructure. And you will need to do it at a certain time to enrich the quality of your data. I would say we have two use cases where we are using Google Sheets in our data warehousing projects. First, we do certain mappings in Google Sheets, like defining product categories, marketing campaign groups, and more. And second, we define rules inside the sheet to control certain calculations in the models, like the calculation of the targets. But that's it. If you want to have more information about SQL in general, you can check out our blogs on Medium, posts on LinkedIn, and our website. The important links you'll find in the description, and then see you in the next video.